Alright, so good morning everybody. Uh, this is the beginnings of probably quite an extended video, but uh, I'm out here in uh, San Bernardino County and I found a fantastically lucky find. Uh, a guy who wants to get rid of a couple of jet skis. Now, I don't jet ski, I have no knowledge of jet skiing, I've never gone jet skiing. He wants to get rid of them just because they're trashed. Um, but what I'm really interested in is the trailer that the jet skis are on, because I thought it would be a fun project to turn a jet ski designed um, trailer into a motorcycle trailer. So behind me is a couple of jet skis on a very old trailer that looks like it will be absolutely perfect for my needs. Here's the trailer that I am being given. Um, one of those uh, free cycling, people who just want to get rid of stuff and they don't want to haul it away and they stick it in the uh, local newspaper and they say come get it. So two jet skis that don't work on a trailer that I think is going to make rather nice motorcycle carrier. Just need to get rid of the jet skis. So it's time to uh, try and hook this thing up, check the brakes, check the electrics, check the wiring, check my trailer connection and uh, get it home. So yeah, quite exciting. Fingers crossed this is going to be a, a fun find and a fun project to turn this into a bike trailer. Alright, so welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. As you can see, I've gotten my trailer home safely from where I picked it up from. And it is minus the jet skis. The jet skis have gone. I was going to take them to the local landfill and dump site um, because they were absolutely thrashed. Um, I had no paperwork for them. Basically the deal I did with the owner for this trailer and jet skis was you take it, you deal with it. <laughs> and I only really wanted it for this, the trailer. This is gonna make a fantastic motorcycle trailer, but my local dump wanted almost $60 per jet ski to get rid of them. So that was gonna cost me $120, $130 to uh, dump them, plus my time and effort hauling them over there and making sure there was no fuel or gasoline in them. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna put them on my local free cycle, Craigslist free stuff. And literally within 15 minutes of me putting an ad on the internet for a couple of free jet skis, I had about eight people that wanted them. So they are gone, someone else's problem. So as you can see, the, uh, the trailer bare bones is in pretty great shape. Um, I did add some temporary uh, magnetic stick-on lights because all the wiring has to be done. Um, so that's my trailer rear hitch connecting lights. Um, but aside from that, this looks like it's going to be a very easy project to add a bed to it and motorcycle loading ramps and securing ramps with tie downs. So that's the plan. So reality is I'm going to have to remove bars, I'm going to remove anything that's not related to motorcycle tie downs, i got to get rid of these uh, jet ski brackets and obviously the um, support sleds that held the jet skis right here, they're going to be taken off. I've been searching the internet for good looking three bike carriers and four bike carriers and coming up with a plan on how many I can actually fit. Comfortably three, I could probably fit four, but I'm thinking three with storage in the front, a nice big storage box on the front to put extra stuff and then three bikes on the back. Not only that, the weight of four bikes on this thing, it's not a dual axle, uh, it doesn't have electronic brakes, so I think it's better to keep it to a three bike trailer just for safety. One central one and then two either side. Um, but the fact that we've got really nice side steps here and we've got solid <coughs> metal arches which are really nice, the frame looks good, so it's just a case of cleaning it, painting it, stripping all these parts off it and getting on with the rebuild. So. The fun begins. Thanks again for watching. About 45 minutes later, I have removed the Sea Doos jet ski sleds, whatever they're called. Um, there's some uh, usable metal brackets on each end, which I'll probably keep, but they were just secured with these uh, U-bolts all the way along. And as you can see, the framework of the trailer now is pretty much uh, open. Um, I cut off the bar that was sticking out here uh, with my grinder. You can see the grinder there. 
uh, and then just added some primer over the top so that the weather doesn't rust it out too badly before I respray the trailer. Um, and everything else has been unbolted. So as you can see, the trailer now is pretty ready for cleanup and uh, repainting and then adding motorcycle ramps and tie downs. So yeah, this is gonna be a remarkably quick and easy project to turn this jet ski trailer into a motorcycle trailer. So just back from the tire installation place and uh, they mounted these on the old rims. Old rims could use a uh, fix up, so that's the next thing. Um, these are 175 80 by 13s and I picked up three Carlisle uh, eight ply heavy duty trailer tires. I think they were about $70, $69 each um, off of Amazon. Yeah, so the next project is to clean these up and then respray them white with uh, good old Rust Oleum. Just use duct tape. Masking tape is okay if you get the white stuff that's really sticky that's hard to peel off. Uh, the cheapest masking tape for painting, but the uh, the decent blue masking tape does not stick to rubber very well. So uh, if you've got a roll of duct tape or the cheap white masking tape, that'll work. Just uh, run around the inside of the rim. Um, like I said, I'm using uh, semi-gloss Rust-Oleum, and then you just want to get an old piece of cardboard and cut out a uh, circle for the overspray. And that way you can run around with the spray can adjusting and you know making sure you don't get on, on the tire so uh, next up rattle the can and spray Um, right now I've got the wheels off and it's up on jack stands and I'm going to be using, I think i got four or five cans of Rust-Oleum semi-gloss white to basically run around and do touch-ups and respray all the rusty areas. I'm going to sand them down with a palm sander, give them a quick prime with some grey primer and then white spray paint so that's going to clean up the frame um, as you can see we've got the uh, wheels off on axle stands um, alrighty so that's a couple of cans of uh, the rust-oleum white uh, went on nice and smoothly looks a lot better uh, all the way around here a little bit of overspray here I need to uh, take off. Other than that, the frame is looking a lot better. So uh, next up is positioning the ramps. So these are the uh, ramps that I've decided to use for uh, the loading ramps and obviously I'm gonna fix these to the uh, top of the trailer. Um, I got four of them, they come in sets of two, 84 by 10, um, they ran about $75 for a pair uh, from my Harbor Freight Tools. Um, so I'm going to unpack these and put them on top of the uh, trailer and see how they look. So here you can see the three ramps laid out on top of the trailer. Uh, in a rough position. Um, it's very important that when you load a trailer, especially with motorcycles, that the, the weight of the motorcycles needs to be over the center axle. So as far as uh, centering the ramps with the weight of the bikes and the center weight, the main weight of the bike centrally over the uh, main axle, that's kind of important. We don't want them too far forward because that's going to make the nose of the trailer very forward heavy and the back end's going to fishtail. 
um, or if we have the ramp sticking off the end, again, that's going to create a very unstable trailer when you're trailering and towing. Um, so we're going to try and keep the bulk of the weight and keep it centered over the axle. So, All right, so here you can see the ramps in place on the trailer. One's, uh, well, two of them in the upside down position, one's in the right side position. Um, as much as I'd like to have a channel to ride the bikes up and keep them centered on the rail or the track um, or the ramp rather, um, I'm going to actually go with this position because that's going to give me more uh, lateral strength from the ramp. The ramps are rated at about a thousand pounds, um, but if they are upside down like this, then the weight's going straight down onto the fins, uh, the cutouts from the bike, and it's not being supported by the side rails of the ramp here, which I think is important to give it more lateral strength. So I don't want them bending under the weight of a bike, especially being transported. Um, so we're gonna go without the, uh, the channel <laughs> and go with the flat and just make sure the bikes are centered on the uh, ramp before they get strapped down. Okay, so here's a little bit of progress update. Um, as you can see, the uh, loading ramps are in position where they're gonna be welded down. I've added the front wheel uh, brackets to hold the front tire in place. Those are welded, uh, cut and welded into place. Now you can kind of see them there. They are tack welded four points. Um, that one there. And you can kind of see the almost what it's going to look like once it's welded down. The only other thing I had to do was uh, cut a slot in the side here um, just to give that some support on the front end. That'll be welded right there um, as welded, welded on the sides. Um, I did the same on the other side. And you can kind of see that a slot cut. Uh, there you go, right there. Um, so that I can push it forward and it just lines up perfectly on the existing framework. So it's all going together very nicely. Time to do some welding. Yeah. New, uh, well, repainted the old wheels back on now with the new tires. Uh, as you can see, this is the loading ramp, which is unsecured right now, but everything else is secure. So we're gonna have the uh, ramp probably here. I need to make some form of uh, release connector that will fasten it, hold it down when we're traveling, but I can unscrew it, take it off and remove this ramp, and then I can use the ramp for loading the bikes on. Uh, and then the next thing I need to do is, this is where the spare tire is going to be held. So this will be the uh, spare tire mount. Um, so we've got to put in the spare here. And then figure out what I'm going to do with the, uh, the jack. Ideally I'd like to get a, a tongue jack that goes in the center here. And get rid of this wind up jack, which is kind of temporary. It would be nice to have a, a decent jack here. I may... Um, modify that to work here that might be a good position for it um, but uh, we'll see what happens and then obviously I need to rewire everything the spare tire carrier installed as you can see we've got uh, some a u-bolt coming up through the center a couple of uh, twisties which will line up together and you can put a padlock through I'm just using a bolt right now to hold it down but that holds it nice and secure and I even got my sewing machine out and made myself a uh, a cover to go over that. That's just made out of an old barbecue um, barbecue fabric for an outdoor barbecue. Keep it shiny, so just cut some fabric and that will elasticate over there. Uh, ramps are all in place. Um, pretty simple the way I fabricated the uh, hold down or the tie down. This is just simply um, a bolt. And that is nice and tight. Um, what I did was I welded, if you look down through there, you can see a welded bolt 
to the side of the frame and then this bolt just goes straight down through it and secures on top. So one at this end, one at that end, right there. And that's my loading ramp held to the surface of the trailer for when I'm driving. So next up is the wiring for the brake lights and then I gotta put my uh, number plate back on. Um, so brake light wiring has to be redone number plate and that's almost it except for I want to put a tongue box on the front storage box on the front and then sort out this uh, the raising and lowering uh, hitch point um, for adjusting so uh, it's coming together it's coming together so as you can see I removed the uh, the tongue lift from the side here which was a rotating one so you could fold it out of the way I took off the uh, rotating portion of it at the back um, and I have welded it to the center of the tongue here just to give a much cleaner installation. It's just uh, tack welded with a bunch of tabs. It's pretty solid in there. Welded around the bottom at the base there as well where it goes up and down. So it's absolutely rigid. Permanent installation looks a lot cleaner and we can drop the wheel down and we are now off the jack supporting the tongue and we are raising and lowering the trailer so that we can actually now push the trailer manually by hand yay using the front wheel jack so pleased with that that's a much cleaner look just gonna have to sand that down and give it a fresh coat of uh, rust-oleum paint um, but uh, a much cleaner, more permanent installation for that front tongue jack. I like that. Alright, so on with the uh, trailer wiring. <laughs> 